And now it's time for my pick of the week. And this pick has everything I love about stuff for a pick of the week. It has retro computing, it's nerdy beyond belief, and a ton of work has gone into it. So uh, Tony Landy has created a great demo showing off how Azure DevOps can be used to develop, build, package, and deploy a program written for the Commodore 64. That's right, this is not a joke. Hello and welcome to Operation 8-Bit. I'm your host, Tony Landy, and as usual, we have Sparky behind the camera, hoping that we can finish this up quickly so he can get the hell out of here. An interesting part of my day job is that I travel around the country and give presentations on modern development techniques. One topic that I cover a lot is DevOps. Not just from the technical perspective, but also from the cultural aspect of how it leads to organizational change. That second part is a video for another time. But for the technical part, the product that I use in most of my demos is Microsoft's Azure DevOps. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to call out that Microsoft is not paying me to endorse any of their products. Yet. I've been using Azure DevOps ever since the early days when it was called Visual Studio Online not just for my professional projects, but also for my personal ones. One of the things that Microsoft has always promoted about Azure DevOps is that it can support any language on any platform. You can see here on their website, they talk about being able to support Node, Python, Java, and that you can deploy to Linux, Mac OS. Down here, they talk about being able to deploy to AWS and Google Cloud. So obviously they're trying to make the point that it's not just for .NET programs running on Windows or Microsoft's Azure. So I started thinking about how I could really put that marketing slogan to the test. And I came up with a crazy idea. What if I could use modern development tools and Azure DevOps to develop, build, package, and deploy a program written for a Commodore 64? Not only would this really push the limits of the platform, but it would also make for a really cool jaw drop moment in my presentations. So what we're gonna cover in this episode are the different pieces I needed in order to turn that idea into a reality. And then I'm gonna show you how to put everything together in Azure DevOps and make it work. So let's get started. What I want to put together is an end-to-end -end DevOps solution, starting with editing the code. And for that, I'm going to be using a sample program from DustLayer's C64 programming tutorials. I've already cloned a copy of this over to my Azure DevOps tenant, so we can start working with it over there. For compiling the app, I'm going to use the Acme Cross Assembler. I like this one because it can produce code for a variety of processors, which means that if I want, I can write code for an Atari, the Nintendo, or even that Bender unit that I've been thinking about building. Okay, next let's take a look at the editor we'll be using for our code changes. There are some great IDEs out there for writing programs on your PC for the Commodore, with one of the best being Arthur Jordanson's CBM Studio. I really like all of the tools and features that are packed into this IDE, and it was the editor that I used when I was going through Derek Morris's book, Retro Game Dev. However, for this project, I want to stick with something that's going to be more recognizable to a wider audience. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code instead. It's already my go-to editor for various development projects, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. Also, I am a bit lazy and I like that it has built-in Git integration and I don't have to use the command line to push my code to the repo. One of the downsides of going with VS Code for this meant that I would sacrifice features that I'm used to, like syntax highlighting. And that would mean I'd be stuck staring at light text on a black background. I really didn't want to go back to the glory days of monochromatic programming, so I decided to write and publish a custom extension that could handle this for me. If you head over to the Visual Studio Marketplace, in the VS Code section, you can search for this extension and you'll see it listed in the results. I'm always surprised when I come to this page and see how many times it's been installed. 
I guess it just goes to show that the retro dev community is alive and well. Obviously, I've already got it installed on my machine. So if I switch tabs to the same file with a .asm extension, you can see how the syntax is now highlighted. Okay, let's go take a look at what we'll need for our CI CD pipeline. Azure DevOps comes out of the box with hundreds of pre-installed tasks for building, testing, packaging, and deploying your apps. If what you need isn't part of the base service, the marketplace has hundreds of more extensions. The obvious challenge for a project like this was despite the wide range of capabilities that it has to offer, cross-assembler and disk imaging tasks for a Commodore 64 simply did not exist. So again, I decided that I would create my own custom extension. Like the VS Code extension, I've published these to the marketplace for anyone that wants to use them. For the build task, we're targeting Acme, so this extension is effectively a companion to the VS Code extension that I showed you earlier. Again, this is great if you're looking to create a CI CD pipeline for a platform other than the Commodore. The second extension I created allows us to put our program onto a Commodore 64 disk image. This is useful if your program has multiple files that you need to package, or if you're using an SD2 to IEC device, or even if you want to add it to one of those retro game C64 minis. Okay, let's head back over to Azure DevOps and I'll show you how to put these together into a CI CD pipeline. We're going to start out with a new pipeline and I'm going to use the classic editor since it's more visually appealing than me editing YAML files in a video. From here, I'll select the master branch of my repo and then I'm going to start with an empty job. The first task I need to add is the Acme Cross Assembler. I've only got one setting I need to change for this. I just need to tell it the file I want to compile, so I'll select that from here. Next I'm going to add the disk imaging task. And in the settings I'll start by giving my disk a name. The disk name can be a maximum of 16 alphanumeric characters, uh, but spaces are not allowed. In the settings, I also have the option of selecting the disk image type that I want to create. From this pull down, I can choose either the 15, 41, 71, or the 81. I'm just going to leave this at the 15, 41. Finally, I just need to tell it the name of the program file I want to copy over. And this is the same name that's already defined in our source code. The last task I'm going to add will publish our build artifacts into the artifact staging directory. This is going to take all the files that get generated from the prior two tasks and put them into a folder that I can access later. All right, let's go ahead and try to run this and see if I've worked anything up. All right, that worked. So let's go through the logs and I'll explain a little what happened behind the scenes. And I'll start off with the Acme extension. The first thing this extension does is it goes out and checks to see if the latest version of Acre Cross Assembler is installed on the build agent. If it doesn't exist, then it goes out to SourceForge, downloads that latest copy and puts it into a tools folder for us. From there, it takes the parameters that we provided in the settings and it passes those over as a part of a command to fire off the build. The C64 disk image utility works pretty much the same way. It looks to see if WinVice is installed on the build agent and if not, downloads it from, and puts it into the tools folder. And then again, it runs through the commands to create a formatted virtual disk and write files to it. The last step in the pipeline was to copy the files to the artifact staging directory. If we click here, we can see that both our program file and the disk image file we created in the previous steps are there and ready to download. Now, some of you may be thinking at this point, all that work and he's going to download the file. This is supposed to be a DevOps demo. 
and you'd be right. But as I mentioned earlier, I travel all over the country to talk about this, and this demonstration has become part of that. There would obviously be a problem getting on an airplane with any of this equipment. Working C-64s in good condition are a bit rare, not to mention a little bulky and not all that portable. This Commodore 60, SX-64, in theory, is portable, but it's the size of a standard carry-on and weighs in at about 23 pounds. Could you imagine trying to get through airport security with this beast? Besides the lack of portability, without special adapters, the video signals from the originals won't work on any modern projection system anyway. This C-64 Mini is small enough to travel with, it's capable of sideloading a USB, and it has HDMI outputs. So, in theory, this could be an option. But the real issue isn't the portability of the hardware, it's the lack of automation. DevOps is about automation. And having to sneaker net a program from my laptop to a machine using a thumb drive misses the mark for that type of presentation. The deployment needs to be automated as well and it needs to be something that I can show without having to lug around extra equipment. To get around this, I've built a website that's running a JavaScript version of the Vice emulator. The site is hosted in Azure Blob Storage that's set up to be a static website, so it's super cheap to host. This will also let me stick with a fully automated pipeline, and I don't need to stand up a VM in the cloud to run an emulator. Another nice thing about this approach is that it makes my release pipeline very simple. I only need a single task that copies the files that I want from that archive staging location, that drop folder, over to my storage account. And I've already got this set up so that it's going to trigger whenever a build finishes. Okay, let's walk through this from end to end and see how it's all going to come together. Let's start by jumping over to the emulator to see what the current song is. Now you can see here in the disk images pull down list, I have a few images already loaded, including a C64 DevOps demo image from before. Okay, for those of you who don't know this song, it's When I'm 64 by the Beatles. Okay, it's an old Commodore 64 user group and joke but it seems appropriate for the situation. Okay, let's go ahead and change this to a different song and see what happens. Back in VS Code, I've already created a feature branch and I'm gonna change the song to something different. With this sample code, all I need to do for that is to update the load resource file. You can see in this list that I already have a few different files to choose from. How about we take the theme from the 1966 Batman TV series? Okay, I'll save my change and I'm going to push the code up to the Git repo. And now all we need to do is create a pull request. Back in Azure DevOps, uh, the title has already been populated to my PR, so all I need to do is click Create. Here we can see the change, and if I had anybody else working on this code with me, they could do my code review. But since it's just me and this is a demo, I'm just going to go ahead and self-improve and complete the PR. For the sake of time, I'm going to speed up the screen capture of the build task since you've already seen that already and I'm sure nobody wants to listen to the Jeopardy music again. Now it's all finished, we can head back over to the website where we should be able to see, or in this case here, our change. And there we have it. Everything was deployed through the pipeline and our new song is playing. And yes, you just got Rickrolled. And yes, that is really cheesy, but live with it. It was over a year ago that I came up with this idea and wrote my first blog post about it. And I'm actually surprised about the impact that it's had. First of all, 
at the time of this recording, the blog post has been viewed well over 10,000 times. And I've gotten feedback from people all over the world. Most of the comments were positive. People thought it was an interesting idea. But there were more than a few that still called me a shell for Microsoft. Speaking of Microsoft, in addition to getting Christina Warren's pick of the week on Inside Channel 9, some of the guys from the Azure DevOps team over at Microsoft have started doing very similar presentations to this one. Back in April of 2019, Ed Thompson showed an example at Microsoft Build. But in his version, he puts the virtual Commodore 64 into a Docker container. And I kind of found that interesting. I was at that conference and got a chance to meet and talk with him about his variation. More recently, back in November of 2019, Todd Whitehead from Microsoft did a presentation at the NDC conference in Sydney, Australia. Now, his is really super close to my original idea. He even uses all but one of my extension as he's going through his demo. So if imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, I gotta say I'm pretty flattered. All of that is cool, but the real fun for me is when I'm at a Microsoft training center in front of 30 or so people and I show this as part of my tool capabilities wrap up. The reactions run anywhere from what the f stunned looks to all out applause. Even the kids in the audience whose parents are as old as the equipment are pretty impressed. So that being a measure of success, I would say that this has met the criteria. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe because we have new videos coming out about every other week. As a reminder, all of the profits from any ad revenue that we make from this YouTube channel go to support charitable organizations like the Armed Services YMCA, who in turn use those funds to support our junior enlisted military members and their families. For a complete list of the charities we support and how you can help, please visit our website. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Again, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time on Operation 8-Bit. You know, it's, you know, we said it in that other video, in the donations video, that I really need a bigger table. I need a better chair, but I also need a bigger table. Again, I mean, it's like, dude, I, 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 I just, at least I could see over everything this time. It wasn't like that monitor where it was like you can only see the cut off of my head. <laughs> but hey, look. No, you can see this is actually the demo. Yeah, dig that, yeah, dig that Sid music.